Yes, brother, this is uh, seem like a wild question as you stated, but there is no shame for you to ask and learn about your dean. The question is say, is it okay to go to a bar as long that I don't drink? No, it's not okay, I'm sorry to tell you this. Because the place is a place of sin and disobedience of God. There is people who drink, there is people who is dancing, there is people who kissing. So there is many types of haram. And Islam ruling, if you could not change the evil, at least forbid it in your heart and stay away from it. Therefore, you could not be in a nightclub. I'm sorry to say this. But believe it or not, I'm not sorry to say to you that this is the answer. I shouldn't be sorry because I don't make the law. And this is the bottom line. When something forbidden, you are not supposed to associate with it by any means. If you can change it, this is what you're supposed to do. If you could not, get away from it. Thank you. Yes, brother, I respect what you're saying. Sheikh, I'm serious. I sell wine, but I give the profit of it to the mosque. Sheikh, I'm serious about it. I don't mean any disrespect. This is fine, my dear respected brother. You know you are not supposed to sell haram stuff. And the hadith is saying, Indeed, Allah is good, and Allah accepts only what is good. You don't want to get this profit for your own self and your family, because in, you know that it's haram, it's filth, it's something bad. So what you don't want to take for yourself, how are you going to give it to Allah or give it to the mosque of Allah? Why you don't make a repentance? Why you don't come back and stop sailing? Come back to Allah, stop sailing the haram, clean your income and repent to Allah. And give to Allah or to the house of Allah a dollar from halal better than a hundred dollar from haram. Thank you. The question says, my uncle calls all the saint and the righteous people, the awliya, which are the friends of Allah. Ya Qadari, Ya Gilani, is this okay? No, it's not okay and is very serious and is a great sin. And this is the worst kind of sin that not exposed for forgiveness unless the person repent. Calling on the dead, calling on the prophet even, calling in the jinn, calling in the angels, calling on the dead people for help or giving you a system, this called shirk. That means you associate in partner beside Allah. And Allah said, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبُ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِ فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُ لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُ بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشِدُونَ O oh Muhammad, when my slave servant asks you about me or concerning me, tell them I'm near to them. Let them call on me and answer my call. I am near to them. So God say, I'm near to you. And God say, call on me. He didn't say, call on Jilani, call in Ali, call in anyone. This is a big and major and the worst sin ever can be committed by a Muslim. We pray that your uncle get to, to the correct understanding and that he repent from what he's doing before he die and he will be in hell. May Allah save us all from hell. Amen. All right, the question say, my grandmother is the one who raised me. I cherish her a lot. I love her. And she gave me a necklace, almonds, something which I bought around my neck. She bought it when she went for Hajj in 1982. And she said that this will protect you from the evil eye. I really very suspicion about it. Wow, this is a longer question. I'm very suspicious about this necklace or this whatever in it is how it's going to protect me. In the meantime, I don't want to take it off because it may be going to disturb my grandmother and she will be mad at me. 
brother or a sister who that you need to please first who you supposed to be concerned about first Allah or your grandmother this another type of shirk and a almond or a rock or anything that you button around your neck is not going to protect you from the evil eye do what the Prophet did and do what the Prophet taught us say ikhlas falak nas and recite it in yourself say the dua that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa used to say on Hassan and al Hussein. so and in the meantime be kind to your grandma explain to her that this is not right you could not do it you love her so much but the Prophet forbid us to do this may Allah help us all and bring us to the correct understanding about our deen thank you uh, I think we're coming to our final question dear Sheikh I love you so much but I'm sorry to say everything I heard in this show is haram 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 where is the easiness of Al Islam where is the mercy of Al Islam my dear respected brother or sister I don't make the law I'm sorry and I'm not going to cheat you I have to be merciful towards you by telling you what is right if you ask me a question which is the answer is okay or halal I will tell you as example if you ask me is it okay to get married I will say yes is it okay to have a nice car from halal income I would say yes but I'm sorry that most of the question was asking about things which is forbidden I didn't make up the question I'm here to answer the question and I'm here to relate the law, not to make the law. And I could not make the Islam easy from my own mind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who facilitated Islam. He said, if you could not find ablution, waterfall ablution, make tayammum. If you could not fast because you're traveling, break your fast, make other days. So there is many, many means in Islam that make things relax but we could not relax the things according our own opinion because we live in america now the halal will be haram and the haram will be halal i'm sorry i could not help you in this and thank you for your feeling and your concern and may god almighty guide all of us to what is right and enable us to do what is right and again this is your host muhammad said adli Director of the Islamic Center of Columbia, South Carolina. Until I see you again for Q and A, may the peace and the blessing of Almighty Allah be with you. Assalamu alaikum.